Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays. That was even less funny than yesterday. Last week's podcast, man, that sucked. Obscure offspring references, that's how I'm going to start the fucking episode. What am I doing? What am I doing, man? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm doing a podcast when I'm in a shit mood. And whenever I do a podcast when I'm in a shit mood, one of two things happens. One, it's a shit podcast because I'm in a shit mood and I delete it because I'll go, Fuck this, this is shit, I'm in a shit mood, it's shit, it goes in the bin. And I just flush it down the toilet where shit should go. Or, I'm so fucking angry that for some reason you cunts think it's funny. So, that's what we're, I'm in a shit mood. It's it's the fucking shit mood Sunday's spearhead, shut your cunt. That's what it is, alright? That's the new name of the podcast. The Shit Mood Sunday Spearhead uh, uh, Cunt. I don't know how you spell the uh, uh, bit, but fucking work it out. Someone get on it, get it. Hey, graphic designers, I need a logo by by yesterday. I need that on my desk yesterday. (laughs) Guys, I'm in a shit mood because I've been having a wonderful time on tour. The tour is almost over. We've got two shows left in Melbourne. I got one sold out on Friday. Saturday has a few tickets left. Loosebeers.com slash gigs. Come to the show. If you don't come to the show, you're a fucking dog. Sorry. Sorry to tell you, you're a dog. All right? <laughs> it's, the, it's the thing that I'm most proud of in life is my stand-up. It's fucking good. It's better than anything else I do. And if you don't, if you like anything else that I do... And, and you can come to the show, but you choose not to. Hey, man. Hey. You're a dog. <laughs> I'm in a shit mood because I've had the most wonderful time on tour. Going around the country. Planes. Cars. Ubers. Living the dream, man. Getting on stage every night, performing for you cunts. Living the fucking dream. Doing whatever I want. Had to go to Culture Kings a couple of times because my fucking tour manager is obsessed with the place. But hey, that's the price you pay for having a fucking tour manager. Sometimes you got to go to places you don't want to go. But for the most part, I've been doing whatever I want. Now, I finally come back to Melbourne, come back home. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a rest. I'm going to have two weeks off. I got two weeks from the last show we did in Wollongong to the Melbourne show. I've just finished my first week off. Haven't done fucking anything. I did a podcast for you cunts. That's it. Podcasts are easy. They're fun. Except for when I'm in a shit mood. Right? Had my one week off. Great. Going awesome. Didn't do anything. When's the next video coming out? Shut up! I'm having a break. That's when. Huh? Fuck you. That's when. When's the next video? Shut up. Oh, stop doing tour vlogs. Where's Lou Review? In your fucking urethra. That's where it is. Have a look. Open it up. <laughs> I'm doing two vlogs until I get back on track and I make videos. Having a fucking break. I've been working myself insane for the last 18 months since the crowdfund. Anyway, get back to Melbourne. I'm like, ah, oh, love Melbourne. Love my hometown. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the comic shop. I'm going to relax. going to read. I've read like four comic books. And a whole book in the week that I've been back. It's been great, right? But today, right? Today, I got on the train for the first time. And for the first time in two months. And I think this is it, guys. I can't do it anymore. The time's come, man. I need... This might be a big call. And I've said it a few times before, but this time, man, I need my fucking license. Because I can't do it anymore, man. I can't do the train anymore. I'm 24. I can't take the train anymore. First of all, right, this is going to sound fucking wanky, but I too many people notice me on the train now. I'm doing, I'm literally doing too well to take the train because every time I get on the train, I reckon I meet five people that like my shit and get photos. And that's great. I love meeting people. If you see me, say hi. That's no worries. I like that. What I fucking hate 
is all of the other people on the train who have no idea who I am go, Oh, is he famous? Who is he? Should I know who he is? Should I get a photo? Even though I don't know who he is? That's why I fucking hate. Because it's like, dude, if I was famous, one, you would know who I am. Two, I wouldn't be on the fucking train. I'd be in a limousine. Like Jay-Z. You know, fingering Beyonce on the way to the party or whatever that fucking song was about. We ain't even gonna make it into this club. I couldn't do that song, right? I'd be like, oh, we're almost definitely going to make it to the club. Because we're halfway there on the train. And if I start finger fucking, you will get arrested. You know that's what that fucking Beyonce... You guys know the song that I'm talking about? That Beyonce song? We ain't even going to... I'm going to look it up. What is it? We ain't even going to make it. YouTube Beyonce Club Jay-Z. Right? We ain't even... We ain't even going to... Make it to this club. Dude, you guys should see what I just typed. I I am so bad at typing and talking. I'm going to screenshot it. I'm going to post it. What I fucking just typed into Google. I'm going to post this shit in, in the Speared Sundays podcast group on Facebook. I'm going to post what I typed. I wrote... I can't even say it. It's not even English. I wrote... Hey, you YouTube and Beyonce Club Jatty Z, we ain't even gonna make it slash T. That's what I wrote. But somehow, Google is so fucking good that I, even though I wrote that like an idiot, it still came up, alright? Is that, is, is this even the fucking thing? Oh, great, a McDonald's ad. Hey, fuck off with your Monopoly. What is this? 30 days, 30 deals. Hey, man. 30 suck my dick. Suck 30 dicks, Maccas. I don't want, I don't want you to think. Every time I see shit out, it makes me want to get ad blocked, but then I remember that's how I feed my kids. Is this it? Or is this not it? Oh, yeah. This is like... This is a really sexy song, but you know... Oh baby, oh baby, we better slow it down! You know, like, this whole sexy song in the film clip? You know, she's like all dressed up in like bondage and masks and Jay-Z's feeling her tits and everything and it's like... And they're like... And then it's just her talking about her fucking ass and her tits, right? She's like, we ain't even gonna make it in this club. You know, right, that that song was just written because one day in the limousine, Jay-Z just started fingering her like a fucking animal. Like, 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 there's nothing sexy about that dude. Like, it was just, in the back of a limo, limo Jay-Z just starts finger-fucking his wife. Like, Ugh! And you can't, hey, man, I've, I've tried it. You can't really finger-fuck someone properly in a car, dude. Like, first of all, it's it's rude as, all right? The, the, imagine this, right? You're in a limo, all right? with Beyonce, and you're fingering her, Oh, I'm getting a bit of a stiffy. <laughs> okay, but it wouldn't be Beyonce, right? Just because it's fucking Beyonce being all sexy, and she's like, oh, we ain't even gonna make it to this club. The other half of that interaction is Jay-Z's ugly fucking head going, yeah, you like that, Beyonce? Yeah. I got 99 problems, and uh, bitch ain't one. Yeah. Like that fucking, her, imagine that horrendous shit. Every time Beyonce sings a sexy song, I'll look at her and I'll go, yeah, man, you're hot as fuck, but dude, imagine Beyonce, like fucking Jay-Z's dad bod on top of Beyonce. That's what she's writing about, man. It doesn't matter how sexy her voice is. At the end of the day, it's fucking Jay-Z and his five inch penis going, <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> You know that he makes that noise as well. Because, hey man, Jay-Z, I reckon, is the ultimate champion of hiding how much of a fucking nerd he is. How much of a fucking dork the guy... He can rap! One of the best rappers alive, man. But he's also one of the biggest fucking dorks on the planet. And, like, have you seen that photo of him jet skiing? Like, every now and then, Jay-Z's fucking really cool, but every now and then, 
the mask slips and you see the real Jay-Z. Then it's like him with his fucking dad bod wearing a red helmet, riding the, riding the jet ski like he's pushing a shopping cart with his limp wrists. And then, and then you just see him like, and you think that's the guy that fucks Beyonce. We ain't never gonna make it to this club. <laughs> <laughs> like that fucking song is just like, I can't picture it as sexy. Cause you know what else is hilarious? Like if you watch the fucking film clip, man, it's her in like lingerie and like rubbing her tits and it's, it's real sexy, but you, you notice that Jay-Z's not in the... <laughs> Jay-Z's not in the film clip because he would fuck... Not even his face is in it, dude. Like, his his hands are in it, maybe. It's literally just his hand grabbing her ass. And, and even then, if you watch the... Like, if you watch the hand grabbing her ass, like, it's not... <laughs> like, he just... It's, he fucks it. It's not even like a sexy grab. It's like, oh, yeah, this is alright, Beyonce. <laughs> at the end of the day, man, no matter how sexy Beyonce tries to write her music, at the end of the day, all I can think about is Jay-Z on top of her going, <laughs> this is awesome. How has nobody realized that I'm a fucking dork yet? What was I saying? Oh yeah, I was saying that like, like I couldn't I couldn't do that song, man, because my you know she's talking about it in the back of a limousine. I'd be talking about it on a fucking train, and I, I'm pretty sure I don't know, I don't know I haven't asked Jazz, but I'm pretty sure she wouldn't let me finger her on the train. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, fucking, what was I say? Oh yeah, dude. I've tried to, you can't fit, you can't, it doesn't work in a car, alright, it doesn't really work, I mean, maybe because I'm too fucking long, I can barely have sex in a normal bed, uh, we have to add an extra bed at the fucking end, because I can't prop myself up, <laughs> as my legs fall off the end, right, I can barely have sex in a normal fucking bed, imagine me trying to root in the back of a fucking beetle, anyway, I'm saying, man, you can't, Finger fuck Beyonce in a limousine, it's rude. Alright? In the song, she talks about we're gonna need a towel. Which means fucking Beyonce is just in the back of a limousine that she doesn't own, that she's probably rented for the night. Right? And and Jay-Z's like <laughs> And then she's just squirting all over the fuck of someone else's fucking limo. That's rude, man. Not polite at all. Jay-Z be like, <laughs> this keeps going like this, we're going to need to get my jet ski. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I talking about Jay-Z making Beyonce squirt someone else's limo? Well, that's right. I can't take the train anymore, man. Because, right? One, too many people start saying hello to me anymore, which is fine, whatever. That's the fucking life I chose. But, I I just, I can't do it anymore. It's, it's done. It's done. I've lived the life. You know what it is? We had a rental car for three weeks and we got to drive wherever we wanted and that, that was it. I was like, man, this is like, a, this is it. I can't go back to the train. Then the first fucking train ride I go into, right? The first one. The first fucking train I get on was today, right? Had to travel 40 minutes into the city. Not long at all. Only 40 minutes. Short trip, right? 40 minutes into the city. All I wanted to do was go to fucking Games Workshop and get myself some spray paint, right? For my fucking little toy soldiers, which I'll tell you all about later. Oh, like, that's a plug. You know, 60% of you cunts just turned it off. Oh, he's going to talk about that? i see ya. <laughs> I'm going to go listen to Beyonce talk about getting fingered by Jay-Z. <laughs> um, right? 40 minute trip. Easy. So, get on the train. Fucking train re bus replacements. I'm like, oh great, now I'm going to get on the fucking bus, right? 
So I get on the bus and then I get on another train. Bus goes, whatever. I'm listening to my fucking music. I'm like, you ain't gonna make it into this club. <laughs> Alright, listen to that. I wasn't listening to that. But it makes the, makes the story funnier. Get on the fucking train. And then uh, I'm listening to my music and I'm reading my fucking book, right? And then I feel something brush the back of my head. I look behind me. There's a guy behind me. I think he, oh, he must have just leant back a little bit too far. That's fine. Whatever. Five minutes go past, right? I feel it again. I'm like, oh, he leant back too far again. No worries. Five minutes go past. His fucking hand runs from the bottom of my head to the top of my head through my hair. And then I hear his mates laugh. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. He's doing it on purpose to impress his friends. Well, let's see how impressed they are when I make your mate shit his pants. So immediately, before, while his hand's still touching my fucking head, and he tried to play it off like he leant back, but you know he did it. You know that thing where they do it on purpose, but they're pretending? So I immediately turn around. I take my head, head, headphones off, I look him in the face, and I go, Hey bro, don't fucking touch me again. <laughs> and he shit his pants. And then I had to turn around and be like, Great, now, for the rest of the fucking 20 minute train ride, I'm waiting for the king hit. <laughs> so I paused my music and I still had the headphones on so I could listen to them talk. But, but what freaked me out was they were talking in a different language. And I was like, oh, great. This is why they're talking about fucking beheading the infidel or some shit. <laughs> that was racist as fuck. I think they were, they were Vietnamese. They weren't even Arab. But they were just, they were just like young 19-year-olds just being fucking dickheads. So I just got up and I moved. And then, and then I was just fucking, for the rest of the train ride, I was just fucking real mad. I was like, oh, man. You know what I should, knew what I should have done? I should have done some like real Naruto shit. Like he touched me and I just fucking spun around with the elbow out. I was like, what the fuck? But then there'd be fucking headlines. I'd be like, <laughs> and, I, and I would have misjudged the age too. It would have been like fucking uh, comedian Lewis Spears. Former, no, it'd be, it'd be former radio host because I'd be fired on the spot. Former radio host spinning elbow, <laughs> spinning elbows a 14 year old Vietnamese child on the train. The boy is still in a coma, it's been three months and he hasn't woken up. And I'll be on there going, oh, but he touched my hair. He touched my hair and I do my hair every day. And it's really annoying when someone touches it and it gets messed up because then, then I have to do it again. No, but seriously, if you touch a stranger on the train, you deserve what's coming. Not that I would ever get on a fucking train fight. Look at me talking. Oh, you deserve whatever's coming for you, fucking dog. Like I would get into a, into a fight on a train. You know what would have happened? You know what would have happened? You know what? I would have stood up, and then as soon as I stood up, there was three dudes. They would have just beat the fuck out of me and taken my phone. And then I would have been like, oh, now I have to buy another fucking iPhone. At least I don't have an Android, though. At least I'm not a fucking Huawei whack job. And anyway, right, that doesn't, that's not where it is, right? So I fucking moved away from those cunts. And then I get on a train, and then I had to change trains, because the bus took us to some other train line, and then to get to the city, we had to change again, right? So this 40-minute fucking trip turned into a, about an hour 20, right? Uh, and then I get on another train, right? And I'm on my phone, I'm just looking at shit. I read something in my book, I'm like, oh, I want to look that up, right? So I'm looking up this shit. Right? I read something about some planetary war. I'm reading this Horace Heresy science fiction bullshit. I'm like 14 books into it now, right? And I'm like, oh, I want to read about the intergalactic history of this one planet they mentioned in passing. I'm, I'm a virgin, right? So I'm looking at this fucking planet, and then this thing pops up. Airdrop. I'm like, oh, cool. This very funny fucking joke, right? Airdrop comes up, and it goes... And it's just this image of a fucking meme. And it goes, yeah, I eat ass after school snacks. And then I hear like a bunch of fucking retards on the other end of the train laughing. <laughs> well, we sent a meme. We sent a meme to a stranger on airdrop. <laughs> right? Hilarious. <laughs> airdrop. Meme. 
and it says I eat ass. <laughs> that fucking drooling dickhead. And I'm like, all right, I decline. And then straight up again, it pops up again. I yeah, I eat ass after school snacks. Then I hear on the other end of the train. <laughs> We sent it to him again, immediately after he declined it. And they don't even know that they're sending it to me. All they see is a fucking iPhone. Actually, I'm pretty sure that my, also my airdrop name is, um, I mean, I'm, I don't know why I'm making fun of these fucking dumb kids with their memes, because I'm pretty sure that the airdrop of my phone, how do you check what the name, I'm pretty sure it has a stupid name. Um, how do you check your fucking airdrop? Hey guys, just pausing in the middle of a story to check my phone settings, because fuck you. This is why my, my live shows are so much better than the podcast, because I would feel kind of guilty about that, because people have paid, but not you guys. Nah, you got it for free, so fucking eat my dick, right? Oh yeah, there we go. Name, yeah. So the name of, of my phone is, uh, my name Jeff. So, I'm pretty sure they saw that on the train and went, Oh, let's fucking send him a meme. And I don't know why I'm using that voice for them, because I was like, Oh, let's call my phone my name, Jim. Right? So I hit decline, and they immediately send it again, and I hear at the end of the train, Oh, we send it again, right? So three times I declined this fucking shit meme. So then I just turned my Bluetooth off, and they all went, Oh, oh we can't send memes to him. Whoever that is. That was very funny. So I, yeah, so fucking, I can't do it anymore, man. I need to get my, uh, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm buying, I'm getting, I'm buying a car. That's actually why I want you guys to come to my fucking show and buy the merch. Because I'm, I'm buying a car, man. I've had enough. It's time. I'm 24. Time has come. I'm not going to be that fucking 27 year There was this comedian who was like 27, 28 who had no license. And uh, yeah, it's come too far, man. I remember when I was 18 and I was like, hey, I'll get it before I'm 20. I'm 24. Right? That's it. It's time to get my fucking license. So after this tour, I'm just going to buy a car. I'm just going to buy a piece of shit. No, I'm going to buy a Lamborghini, bras. I'm going to buy a piece of shit that just works. And hey, man. Here's my next contentious opinion, right? Not only does Android suck, right? But so do manual cars. I don't have more control. Cool, bro. Hey, hey, welcome to the future. You still drive a horse to work, do you? Huh? Or you drive a car? Hey, automatic cars have come out. Fuckhead, get one. <laughs> oh, I just feel like I have more control. Oh, yeah? All that control you need on your daily commute to work, huh? Fucking. Nah, dude. I'd rather just an extra drink holder than a fucking gear stick shifter, whatever it's called. I'm not getting a fucking manual. And I don't care, man. People are like, oh, but if you only learn how to drive an automatic car, that means you won't be able to drive a manual in an emergency. Hey, bro, I'd rather, if in an emergency, you know what? If an emergency arose and if someone was like, Oh, no! Oh, no! It's an emergency! And if you if you don't get in this, the only car available, which is a manual car, and you drive it, I, you're gonna die! I'd be like, hey, I'm not driving manual. I'd rather fucking die. Chuck me in the lava. <laughs> I ain't changing gears for no one. Not even myself. I'll jump in the fucking earthquake. Fuck that. I'd, I'd, I'll take my chances swimming in the tsunami. I ain't driving manual, bro. You know, I, you, you know what would happen. You know what happens when you get in a manual driver's car. You get in the in the in the passenger seat, and you have to move the McDonald's. You have to move the three-day-old McDonald's rubbish. Anyone who drives a manual car has McDonald's rubbish. Not even in the passenger seat, in the back seat. That's... <laughs> Anyone who drives manual has like a fucking 1997 Toyota Corolla with McDonald's in the back from three days ago that they were like, oh, I should throw this in the bin. But instead of doing that, they put it in the back seat. And you can fucking smell it. Huh? All you fucking manual drivers, clean up your Maccas. 
Oh, I can just... I can't wait for the tweets. Oh, how can you talk shit about manual drivers when you don't even know how to drive? You don't even have your license. Hey, dude, like this. You've got Maccas in your car. Clean it up. <laughs> Clean it up, you dirty cunts. Alright, what else do I want to talk about on this fucking thing? Man, I, okay, so are we going to talk about this on the radio show? I'm finally back in Melbourne. I'm at the radio station now. We're going to do the show together, Luke and I. Finally, it's been like fucking a month of doing it via link up. It sucks, right? I have in my house like a real big fruit dilemma, okay? I've got something, and this, this is a little bit visual, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. I have a piece of fruit in my hand, and I don't know what it is. Now, it's not because it's a weird fruit, right? It's not like a fucking a dragon fruit or, or like like a weird fruit I've never seen before. I've seen this fruit. The problem is I don't know if it's one fruit or another fruit, right? I've seen both of them, but I don't know what this one is. Okay? I'm holding in my hands what could be either an apple or a pear, right? And you know how I feel about pears. All these cunts bringing them to my shows. Not a fan, okay? This is what I've got. Now, the dilemma comes because it is it is almost definitely... Even the shape, though. It's like kind of pear-shaped, but also apple-shaped. It's like a tall apple, <clears throat> So it it could it's it's certainly more pear shaped than apple shaped, but it certainly could be an apple, right? The 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 dilemma comes with the coloring of the pear. It's absolutely apple color, right? It's like red and and yellow. Pears are kind of exclusively yellow kind of green. This is definitely apple colored, and the 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 feel of it. It's not soft like a pear. It's apple feel. So either this is an unripened pear that's deformed and looks like an apple, or it's a deformed apple that looks like a pear. And I don't know what it is. And the thing that makes it even more confusing is uh, I haven't been home, so I asked mum. I'm like, hey mum, did you buy pears? And she goes, no, I, I just got apples. So... No pears have been purchased. So this should not be a pear. Either someone has mistaken this for an apple, but it's actually a pear, and they put it in the apple section, or the person who purchased it, my mum, thought that it was an apple, but actually it's a pear, and she picked it up from the pear section. So it could be either. And this is a big fucking dilemma, because previously I've had no contact with pears Ever since this lose pairs shit fucking meme that I hate has started, right? But if this is a pair, that means that it's in my house. And my life has been infiltrated by pairs. So, I don't know what this is. We're going to find out on the Luke and Lewis radio show. I think I'm going to throw it to the team and try and work out whether or not it's a pear or an apple. It's a big mystery, man. And a lot of people... Oh, I haven't smelled it, actually. Guys, it doesn't smell like anything. Apples don't really smell like anything, and neither do pears. What does it sound like? It's nothing. I'm trying to work out what this shit is, man. I've got a big fucking fruit dilemma. Dude. Is this what my life has become? Talking about whether or not this is an apple or a pear. That's how much free time I have, man. It's actually crazy. I've got back. And all of the comedy special stuff is done. Oh, people waiting on extra large hoodies. Uh, they'll be sent out this week. And I'm also going to restock large and extra large Death Threat Stone Scammy hoodies. I think they'll only be like 15 extra ones. But they sold out so quick. We got some extra ones. <coughs> we actually sold too many. Uh, which is actually really bad. I think we sold too many when we took them on tour. We weren't keeping track. But I've got all of them 
to post out to the people who are still waiting on them. And then I will also have extras, but I'll let you guys know when I restock them. I'll post it in the group or something. Um, what else do I want to talk about today? Um, oh, it's fucking three. I've got to get out of here in a bit. Um, all right. What are we doing here? I'm going... Anything else I want to do? No, I'm going to do miscellaneous bit at the end because we missed it last week. Hey, guys. Uh, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It is the part where I answer questions sent in by you guys, the listeners. Life advice questions, funny stories, shit, anything you think I would appreciate or or you think I would have an opinion on, send it through to podcast at Uh I would love some extra ones. We're running a little bit low uh, at the moment. Um... But podcast at loosebeers.com, if you would like to send it, I can keep you anonymous. Just let me know. If you, Whatever you write down, I'm going to read. So don't say, hi, my name's this, but call me that. I'm just going to call you this and then read. Uh, like if you go, oh, my name's James, but call me Tim. I'm going to read. Hi, Lewis. My name's James, but call me Tim. All right, Tim. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a Ron Burgundy. Every fucking email that comes into my inbox, right? Now, where are we? What do we have? Oh, here we go. I fucked my university tutor. Ooh. Or Christian salesperson. Ooh. Or two hoes. Oh, I'm going to do Christian salesperson because it's a short one. <coughs> uh, hey, Lewis. So listening after listening to your advice about telling people I'm gay. Oh, right. If you don't know, last episodes I talked about, uh, if you really want to shut down a salesperson, when they approach you, don't say I'm busy. Don't say no. You say something so left of field that they can't even comprehend where it came from, right? My personal favorite is you look at them and you go, oh, sorry, I'm gay. And then you walk away and they don't know what to do. Because they know how to turn a no into a yes. They know how to turn I'm busy into a conversation. They got, they've got they never encountered sorry, I'm gay. Works like a charm every time, right? <clears throat> and here we have a podcast listener who gave it a go. Hey, so listen. after listening to your podcast about telling salespeople I'm gay, uh, it worked. But it was way better than I thought it would. So I was walking down the street and a random guy just starts asking me if I believe in the Christian message. And as per you are, you picked the fucking corker to start with, asked me if I believed in the Christian message. And as per your advice, I just told him, sorry, I'm gay. <laughs> he immediately stepped away and yelled, you will go to tell for your sins and ran away. I can't believe how well it worked. I got a great laugh. Have a shit one. Hey. That's great. I'm, I'm happy that everyone's doing this shit, man. Sorry, I'm gay. Go for it. Ladies, guys, even gay people. Even if you are gay, go for it. It's fucking... It does not does not discriminate. Because if, if, you, if you are actually gay, why the fuck would you tell that to a salesperson? Like, if I walked up to a salesperson and like, Oh, do you have time to talk about this? I was like, oh, sorry, man, I'm straight. They It would still work, but I don't know. Gay just throws a spanner in the works just because... It makes them go, oh, but I'm not homophobe. Why did he tell me he's gay? What the fuck? How do I turn this into a... And you, you're gone. You. Right, they shut down. What else do we have here? Um, two hoes. Here we go. Two chicks threatened to take my dog because of your podcast. I love it. Hey, Lewis, this is my email regarding to how my dog was threatened to, to be taken away from me as a consequence of listening to your podcast. I love it. So, I was walking my dog down the path I usually walk uh, past the train station closest to my house. The station next to my house is renowned for its strange individuals emerging from it. The path is right next to the train. So, I was walking... Oh, the, the path... I'm, I'm retarded. No, this guy's a fucking idiot. Put paragraphs in, dickhead! Don't just write 30, cent 30 lines that are all one sentence. Fuck. The path is right next to the train station. So as I continued walking, two chicks covered in tattoos, wearing short skirts, leggings, and pretty much tits out, walk out of the station and towards me. They instantly noticed my dog and began, began making high-pitched voices towards my lab, Staffy Cross. Uh, we got talking about my dog, and they continued patting him for about two minutes. I kept on looking at them and just thought, why the fuck am I still here? You sound like me, dude. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Um, out of nowhere, I just asked, so what are you, where are you girls off to? They looked at each other and smiled and just said, we're going to do a show. Then the dreaded words came into my head. 
Two hoes! <laughs> and he's written it in all caps. Two hoes! So there were strippers. I lost my shit as I began laughing. They started laughing too, really awkwardly. Then they got serious and said, Why the fuck are you laughing? Then they started to swear at me, saying that I was degrading women, but in reality, I was laughing at a reference from a podcast made famous by a cunt. I was still laughing about two hoes as I pulled my dog away. Also, it was their fault for alerting me to the fact that to, to, for alerting me to the fact they were escorts by smiling and laughing where I, when I asked the, the question. And I could tell by the way they were dressed and the area. One of the chicks yelled out, We will get the dog, you misogynist. You don't deserve that creature. I couldn't help but say, So who will I be watching out for? Any names in particular? They responded with, Tracy and Skylar, you dickhead! Holy fuck, I was dying. Of course their names were Tracy and Skylar. I just started running and laughing at the same time. Legit, I've never laughed so hard in my life. Fucking two hoes. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, where did this happen? Anyway, thanks, Lewis, for the awesome experience because of your shit that happened with your two phones. Also, I came to your independent variable Brisbane show. Ah, oh, of course it happened in fucking Brisbane. Uh, and it was legit the best show you've ever performed, material-wise, and the interactions with the audience, especially the nickname part, and how they were sitting away from each other, chatting shit. Oh, the hecklers, that was funny. Uh, and also the cameraman taunting part. That's probably the rudest thing I've ever done on stage. <laughs> Sorry, had to change SD cards. Um, blah, blah, blah. Best show you... Blah, blah, blah. Fucking compliments. Uh, also the cameraman taunting part. Yeah, that's probably the rudest things that I've ever done on stage to somebody. Uh, but that's what you get at the shows. Me being a fucking cunt. Uh, because it's funny. Um, uh, alright guys, thank you very much for listening. That's the end of the podcast. Uh, I will be back next Sunday, uh, for all the Patreon supporters. Now that I'm home, I'm gonna be getting the, the podcast up early. Hopefully on Thursday, Fridays. Uh, but we'll see. So if you want early access to the podcast, consider supporting me on Patreon. It does help a lot. Uh, and it pays for all the costs of running the servers and all that kind of shit to keep the podcast episodes up there. Every one I do makes it a little bit more expensive and it adds up. All right, that's the end. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, come and see me in Melbourne. The Saturday show this Saturday has uh, fuck all tickets left. I would love to see you guys there at lewspears.com slash gigs uh, if you want to come. And also... Uh, Pretty soon I'm going to have the Independent Variable Tour merchandise. I'm wearing it in this thing. The long sleeve tees and the posters will be on my website as well. If you guys want to grab it, we've sold most of it on um, on tour. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just trying to show off the fucking long sleeves. It looks like I'm, I'm cutting shapes. and Oh, that was cancer. I did a dab. For those audio listeners, you're welcome for not seeing that. Uh, if you want to grab that, that'll be on the, on the website. I'll probably not next week after the tour is done. So... I don't know. The next podcast, I'll tell you how to buy it. All right? That's the end of the episode. Come see me in Melbourne. Uh, it's the final ever time I will ever ever perform Independent Variable and your last chance to see me at all this year because uh, I won't be doing any more gigs. All right? That's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. I will see you next week. Uh, I hope you guys have an even shitter one than those two hoes. All right. See ya.